Ruach, his peace. Because the cleaner we become on the inside, the cleaner we become, the more of him can enter us. Have you ever looked at it like that? His light cannot be mixed with darkness. So the more darkness we hold on to, uncleanliness, evil, disobedient behavior, the more of that we have in us, the less he's got in us. So maybe you haven't got a little drop. He gives everybody who's immersed in his true name of Yahushua HaMashiach a down payment of his Ruach. He promises that to help you. But you might only have a drop, a drop of the drop. Others might have a little bit of a pour, a cup. You know, some might have a cup, and some might have a bucket. You know, like who knows? It's just an analogy, but you see what I'm saying. The more we cleanse out, the more rest we receive. The more of Him that is in us. Each time Yahushua renewed His blood covenant with mankind, each time He lifted it up, brought their attention to it, renewed it. He didn't just renew it with His own blood; He renewed it multiple times. Each time Yahushua renewed his blood covenant with mankind, he gave them an outward sign for them to remember his promises and instructions. Noah was given the sign of the rainbow. Abraham was told that mankind needed to partake in the shedding of blood through their own circumcision as the sign. And at Sinai, the sign of the eternal blood covenant given to Musha is to rest on the seventh day Shabbat. Just like the sign of given to Noach. Nothing's happened, it's still out there. After the rainy days, we see the, the, we see the rainbow, not, not the, the pride, not the gay thing, forget that. The rainbow of Yahushua, it's still in the world, which means Yahushua's covenant, his everlasting blood covenant is still alive. It's because the sign that he gave to Abraham in the sky, I won't destroy the earth again, through water anyway. The sign of circumcision, it's still in the earth. But the, you don't have to circumcise yourself as an adult or a child. You don't have to circumcise your children then. Why would you shed the blood of your children? That's the whole point of circumcision. It just wasn't just some sick, weird, twisted, kinky thing. It was, it was to shed blood. There are many different theories why it was done on the penis. Um, the main one being that the seed passed through the circumcision, through the circle of the circumcision. Well, now the circle is of our heart, the source of our behavior. Our lamp, the source of our worship and our light. So, where are we? So, just as those signs are still alive and kicking, transformed today, but still alive, so is the Shabbat. We rest on the Shabbat, it's amazing. So, we'll stop there. So, let me read a little bit from Fossilized Customs here because I want to bring this in. It's only a few paragraphs about the marriage covenant. Um, and I also recommend you go back to season one, the videos I did when Yitchak, Abraham sent out, Abraham sent out Eliezer to find a wife for Yitchak. And it was Ribka. She was the shadow of a perfect bride who came to meet her bridegroom. So watch that video again, because it's all about, I went into uh, Todd, Todd Bennett's book about the um, marriage betrothal and the consummation and all that sort of thing i read a bit of his book in that um, so refresh yourself on that if you want to but we're going to talk about the everlasting blood covenant just to finish here lou's written this about it the everlasting covenant establishes a new relationship between yahushua and mankind it's the relationship of a husband and his wife so he hadn't revealed himself like this prior He's working towards this restoration, towards this. We can look back and know and see that now, but at the time, they didn't know about the, you know, the marriage idea. It's a relationship of a husband and a wife. That's what Sinai, that's what the giant leap of restoration at Sinai was about. He wanted to be husband and wife. It's metaphoric, of course, or a figure of speech that draws an analogy. Like a marriage, there are two processes involved, betrothal, and consummation. This is the betrothal. The marriage vows are given, and you'll see a bit later they have a feast. This is the official wedding ceremony, but not the consummation, not when the husband and wife come together. Just the betrothal. Fifty days after leaving Egypt, representing the bondage of uh, disobedience, the children of Yisrael, the chosen wife of the promise, were at Mount Sinai. So fifty days later, this is the first Shabbat. Oh, it just says that this was the first Shabbat now called Pentecost. The elements found in the everlasting covenant correspond 
to Yahudi wedding traditions. We looked at all that. Remember the kupa, and uh, which is the husband and wife standing under the marriage home. Yahushua refers to Yisrael as his wife because he has engaged in a formal betrothal. Sinai was this betrothal and two written copies. We haven't come to that yet, but two written copies of the Torah, which is teachings, instructions, written in stone, front and back, with a marriage ketubah. Remember they had to sign the marriage ketubah to make it official? This could be done when the husband and wife were still children. It's signed and then they don't consummate until they're adults, like an arranged marriage. So there were two, uh, where were we? The marriage ketubah, one for the husband and one for the wife. So there's two witnesses. They, these were placed into a special container called the Ark of the Blood Covenant Witness. The husband chose his wife, Yisrael, to care for, provide for, and protect. The wife agreed to obey, forsaking all others. Two witnesses were called forth to hear the covenant, the sky and the earth. They are the witnesses to the wife making her vows. And they said, remember all the words which Yahushua has spoken, we will do. They affirmed, we will do it. At this point, the 70 elders of Yisrael, which is the Sanhedrin at the time, ate and drank with the husband, bridegroom, creator, and sovereign. The wife provided her contribution to the marriage covenant, a type of property brought by a bride to her husband at the marriage. The gold, the silver, the bronze, the fabrics, the oils and precious stones. We're gonna to come to that next episode all for the construction of the ark and the dwelling of the husband among them. It was all about the husband dwelling among them. Even though they didn't even know him or want him really or wanted to stand at a distance, he wanted to be among them. That was the whole point of this. Him being among us and now him being in us. The dwelling place. The terms of this formal blood covenant, the written wedding agreement or ketubah, were burned into stone with the finger of Yahushua himself. The name of the husband was taken by his wife, and so we, they, are called Yahudim. This was corrupted to Judah by translators, then Judah, for the last several hundred years as it had been Jew. Yahushua speaks of his covenant without ceasing, reminding his wife of the marriage, for your maker is your husband. Yahushua Shaddai is his name. Read all of Yeshayahu 54 and you know, I don't know. We're up. So, just wanted to give you a bit more depth of understanding about the marriage covenant that they were forming. And they, they're still ignoramuses at this point. They don't even know what they're doing. They're following shadows. They're, they're having trouble even following the shadows. So, um, but Yahushua has a plan. Just like he's had a plan ever since the beginning. And he's getting closer and closer and closer. He's appeared a little bit of here and there to people. And in a bush and in other things. But now he wants to boom. He wants to dwell on the earth. He wants to take back some time and some space. I'm not going to go into that right now. But he wants, he wants, to, and, and it's contagious for him. So he wanted to start spreading. He wants his earth back. He wants his bride back. Taking back what was his, which the enemy stole through trickery and deceit. So it's an hour and 20 minutes. Guys, that's enough. The eternal blood covenant of deliverance. This is the sign and these were the wedding vows. It still stands today. These are your instructions. So, remember it's a behaviour. The wedding vows, the Ten Commandments or Ten Instructions, I should say, are not something that you chant. They're not a liturgy. You don't have to... The whole point of writing them on your doorposts and you don't have to post them all over your house. They, that signifies that they are a behaviour in your mind, in your heart, wherever you, your house, your house is your dwelling place written in your heart you don't have to go graffitiing your walls you know the ruach within you is the is the comforter the provider the reminder you know so let's be mature and intelligent about our belief and um, we don't have to come together and recite these commandments all the time there are there they are a behavior they are a behavior within us they're written on your heart and we do them just do them Everything can be brought back to these commandments. And these commandments can be explained in three rules as well. Let everybody have it. Don't take anything personal. And let, uh, don't make excuses when you go out into your day. And you'll find that all commandments and all instructions, all the Torah, all 66 books can be brought back to those rules. Anyway, guys, I love you. It's very exciting where we're going now. Just remember, like I said in the beginning, this is a real relationship. 
I had a big flogging this week and I came through it. Just like any parent wants to flog their child to see them grow and their behavior. Get, get your act together, stop behaving naughty. So I was naughty and I got flogged. So the same, he's no respecter of persons. If you don't want to get flogged and you don't want those sharp arrows in your heart, uh, behave yourself, do what you're told, when you're told, and everything will work. That's why we're going through, I'm not just reading these pretty stories for you so that we can all sit and go, oh, that was lovely, yeah. No, everything they went through, we're going through. And so he's coming closer to us. He's definitely coming closer to me. I felt the fire from the mountain shaking. So do I want to stand back? Or do you want to come closer to the fire and let all the impurities burn up? The, the, the impurities rise to the top of the gold, remember? He scrapes the strength of the dross. Get rid of the dross so that we become shining like precious gems and gold and silver. Refine me. Refine me, O Yahushua. So come closer, brothers and sisters, to his esteem. Come closer in overcoming. Fight, run, put it all off. 